I'm on my drive home from work and I was thinking that I'd publish a video on how you can have success with intermittent fasting. For me, my story, many of you might know it, I used to weigh about 178 pounds and I'm only about 5 foot 5 so I was pretty overweight. My cholesterol was at around a 246. And when I found all this out, I knew that I had to make a change. So I started doing some research and found intermittent fasting as a good way to get in shape, lower my cholesterol, and just have a happier life in general, be more healthy. Some people, and intermittent fasting worked for me, and but it doesn't work for a lot of people because there are certain things that they do that are counteracting their efforts. All the good work that they put in, in making the 16 hour fast, doing the good work, and then they undo it by doing things like eating a lot of sugar or refined carbohydrates. And you're gonna have to be, with intermittent fasting, you're gonna have to be really consistent in eating a high fat, high protein, low carbohydrate diet, 80 to 90% of the time. So what I wanted to do is, share a couple hacks that I use to make sure to almost guarantee my success with intermittent fasting and I ended up losing around like 35 36 pounds but more importantly my cholesterol went down to about a 165 which is a huge huge decrease from 246 anything above a 240 put you at risk for having a heart attack. So at 31 years old, I was borderline at risk for having a heart attack, which is no good. So the first thing that I did with intermittent fasting was I really paid attention to how much sugar I was eating. Now, sugar and fruits at this point, if you're doing intermittent fasting, I'm not telling you to avoid fruits, but you might want to cut them down a little bit. But the sugar and fruit is not the same as sugar in candy or sugar in soda or sugar in any processed foods. The reason that you want to avoid sugar is because sugar is really what makes you gain weight. Sugar spikes your insulin in an extreme way and that causes your body to store the sugar as fat in your liver. And this is why we have a problem with obesity and diabetes in our country is because we eat so much sugar. For an adult male, an adult male is only supposed to eat about 38 grams of sugar per day. And there's 38 grams of sugar in one 12 ounce can of Coke. I don't think that's a coincidence. I think that that's something that Coca-Cola and the other bottling companies do on purpose. So avoiding added sugar is the number one way to not only have success with intermittent fasting, but to lose weight in general. So that means staying under that 38 gram mark or just avoiding added sugar altogether. If you're if you consider yourself a sugar addict, you have to have sugar every day and you have to have it in good amounts, then what you want to do is you want to start weaning yourself off of, the, off of the sugar. But the most important thing is you need to be measuring how much sugar you're eating. But my recommendations are to either stop drinking the soda or to switch it to diet soda. Diet soda is not great, but it's a better alternative than drinking sugar with, with ref, than drinking soda with refined sugar in it. Avoid the cereals, cereals, store-bought cereals, Lucky Charms, any of those cereals. They have a lot of sugar in them, lots of sugar. I think they have 10 to 12 grams of added sugar per serving, and servings are not that big. So the number one thing you want to do to have success with weight loss and intermittent fasting, lowering your cholesterol and just being healthier, is to cut down the amount of added sugar you're eating, okay? Just cut it down, 
you can do everything right, but if you continue to consume a lot of sugar, if that's what your downfall is, it's going to counteract any kind of gains that you make as far as weight loss goes. So you got to watch your sugar intake. Number two, you want to track what you're eating. If you're serious about losing weight, it's my opinion that you can't say, I'm not going to count calories, at least in the beginning. You, I've lost weight and I've been successful losing weight and I'm going to tell you that it's a good idea in the beginning until you've developed a habit of eating right to count your calories. There's plenty of apps out there that make it really easy to count your calories and to keep track of what you're eating. I think the best one is my fitness pal. I'm not being paid to say that, but I've been using I've had over 500 days of my fitness pal logs because I've made it a habit. I still track what I eat. And the good thing about tracking what you eat is it gives you a good idea of what you're putting into your body, which is really important, especially if you're trying to lose weight. But even if you're in good shape, you're trying to maintain what you have, it's really important to know the nutrients of what you're putting in your body, like the kind of nutrients you're putting in your body. So that's the number number two most important thing to do if you're trying to lose weight with intermittent fasting is you gotta track your calories. You gotta track your calories, track your macros, and focus on eating high fat, high protein, low carb diet. All right, so track your calories. And then the third thing that I did that I think really helped me out and I alluded to this before in this video, is I focused on eating foods with a lot of protein, a lot of unsaturated fat, unsaturated fat is the key, and low carbohydrates. And if I was eating carbohydrates, even today, if I'm eating carbohydrates, a significant amount of the carbohydrates I eat are complex carbohydrates. So there's you have simple carbohydrates and complex carbohydrates. Simple carbohydrates are things like white bread, <clears throat> anything refined. Sugar is the main simple carbohydrate because they digest very quickly and so your body wants more and that's the reason why we eat so much sugar is because it's a simple carb and it digests very quickly so our body just continues to demand more of it. Complex carbohydrates are things like sweet potatoes, foods like sweet potatoes, regular potatoes, Ezekiel cereal, Ezekiel bread, sprouted grains, anything like that. Lentils, lentils are a complex carb. Those are the carbs that if you're going to eat carbs that you want to focus on eating are complex carbohydrates. But the focus should be if you want to have success with intermittent fasting, the focus should be eating a diet high in unsaturated fat and protein. And some good examples of this, olive oil. Olive oil is a good example of a food that's high in unsaturated fat. Tuna fish is another good example of a food that's high in protein. And then you have things like foods like salmon. Salmon is good, is rich in unsaturated fats and protein. Salmon is one of my go-to meals. You definitely want to add salmon into your diet if you haven't already. And most fish are good sources of fat and good sources of protein. So to wrap it up, those are the three things that I think contributed most to my success with intermittent fasting and the gains that I continue to have in maintaining my weight loss and my cholesterol at the levels that, that I want them to be at. So to recap, number one, most important, avoid refined sugar. Avoid refined sugar. If you need to wean yourself off of it, that's fine, but you're not going to make much progress if you're drinking two or three cans of regular Coca-Cola or Pepsi or Mountain Dew every day, unless you're going out and running 15 to 20 miles a day. It's just not going to happen. The effects that that much sugar has on your body will completely reverse any good things that you're doing, like going out and exercising. So avoid or significantly curtail the amount of added sugar you are consuming on a daily basis. Number two, use 
an app or write down what you're eating on a daily basis and track how many calories are coming in versus how many calories are coming out. Number three, and the final one that I think helped me a lot in achieving success with intermittent fasting was focusing on eating a diet in high in unsaturated fat, a diet high in protein, and a diet low in carbohydrates, particularly simple carbohydrates. If you have any questions or you wanna connect with me and get more advice, remember I'm not a nutritionist, I just found something that worked for me. But if you wanna connect, I'm all about getting this information out here. People generally, most people want to be healthy, just some people, you may not know where to start. And I've been in those shoes before, I had no idea where to start. Did a little research on my own, but I'm all about helping and adding more value in the health and fitness community. So if you wanna catch me, you can message me on Facebook. You can check me out at Jump Rope Veteran, Instagram, Facebook. You can also shoot me an email at jumprovet at gmail.com. I'd love to connect with you and discuss jump rope nutrition or anything else that's on your mind. If you want, leave a comment in the comment box below and I'll get right back to you. Until next time, keep getting after it. Jump rope to freedom. Peace.